Civilizations of the 15th Century, the Islamic World. Beyond the domains of Chinese and European civilization, our 15th century global traveler would surely have been impressed with the transformations of the Islamic world. Stretching across much of Afro-Eurasia, the enormous realm of Islam experienced a set of remarkable changes during the 15th and early 16th centuries, as well as the continuation of earlier patterns. The most notable change lay in the political realm, for an Islamic civilization that had been severely fragmented since at least 900 now crystallized into four major states or empires. At the same time, a long-term process of conversion to Islam continued the cultural transformation of Afro-Eurasian societies both within and beyond these new states. In the Islamic heartland, the Ottoman and Safavid empires. The most impressive and enduring of the new Islamic states was the Ottoman Empire, which lasted in one form or another from the 14th to the early 20th century. It was the creation of one of the many Turkic warrior groups that had migrated into Anatolia, slowly and sporadically, in the several centuries following 1000 CE. By the mid-15th century, these Ottoman Turks had already carved out a state that encompassed much of the Anatolian peninsula and had pushed deep into sub southeastern Europe, the Balkans, acquiring in the process a substantial Christian population. During the 16th century, the Ottoman Empire extended its control to much of the Middle East, coastal North Africa, the land surrounding the Black Sea, and even further into Eastern Europe. The Ottoman Empire was a state of enormous significance in the world of the 15th century and beyond. In its huge territory, long duration, incorporation of many diverse peoples, and economic and cultural sophistication, it was one of the great empires of world history. In the 15th century, only Ming Dynasty China and the Incas matched it in terms of wealth, power, and splendor. The empire represented the emergence of the Turks as the dominant people of the Islamic world, ruling now over many Arabs who had initiated this new faith more than 800 years before. In adding Caliph, successor to the Prophet, to their other titles, Ottoman sultans claimed the legacy of the early Abbasid empire. They sought to bring a renewed unity to the Islamic world, while also serving as protector of the faith, the strong sword of Islam. The Ottoman Empire also represented a new phase in the long encounter between Christendom and the world of Islam. In the Crusades, Europeans had taken the aggressive initiative in that encounter, but the rise of the Ottoman Empire reversed their roles. The seizure of Constantinople in 1453 marked the final demise of Christian Byzantium and allowed Ottoman rulers to see themselves as successors to the Roman Empire. It also opened the way to further expansion in heartland Europe, and in, 12, in 1529, a rapidly expanding Ottoman Empire laid siege to Vienna in the heart of Central Europe. The political and military expansion of Islam, at the expense of Christendom, seemed clearly underway. Many Europeans spoke fearfully of the terror of the Turk. In the neighboring Persian lands to the east of the Ottoman Empire, another Islamic state was also taking shape in the late 15th and early 16th centuries the Safavids. Its leadership was also Turkic, but in this case, it had emerged from a Sufi religious order founded several centuries earlier by Safi ad-Din. The long-term significance of the Safavid Empire, which was established in the decade following 1500, was its decision to forcibly impose a Shia version of Islam as the official religion of the state. Over time, this form of Islam gained popular support and came to define the unique identity of Persian Iranian culture. This Shia empire also introduced a sharp divide into the political and religious life of heartland Islam, for almost all of Persia's neighbors practiced a Sunni form of the faith. For a century, periodic military conflict erupted between the Ottoman and Safavid empires, reflecting both territorial rivalry and sharp religious differences. In 1514, the Ottoman Sultan wrote the Safavid ruler in the most bitter of terms. You have denied the sanctity of divine law. You have deserted the path of salvation and the sacred commandments. You have opened to Muslims the gates of tyranny and oppression. You have raised the standard of irreligion and heresy. Therefore, the ulama and our doctors have pronounced a sentence of death against you, perjurer and blasphemer. The Sunni Shia hostility has continued to divide the Islamic world into the 21st century. On the frontiers of Islam, the Songhai and Mughal empires. While the Ottoman and Safavid empires brought both a new political unity and a sharp division to the heartland of Islam, 
Two other states performed a similar role on the expanding African and Asian frontiers of the faith. In the West African savannas, the Songhai Emperor rose in the second half of the 15th century. It was the most recent and the largest in a series of impressive states that operated at a crucial intersection of the Trans-Saharan trade routes and that derived much of their revenue from taxing that commerce. Islam was a growing faith in Songhai, but was limited largely to urban elites. This cultural divide within Songhai largely accounts for the religious behavior of its 15th century monarch Sunni Ali, who gave alms and fasted during Ramadan in proper Islamic style, but also enjoyed a reputation as a magician and possessed a charm thought to render his soldiers invisible to their enemies. Nonetheless, Songhai had become a major center of Islamic learning and commerce by the early 16th century. A North African traveler known as Leo Africanus remarked in the city of Timbuktu, Here are great numbers of Muslim religious teachers, judges, scholars, and other learned persons who are bountifully maintained at the king's expense. Here too are brought various manuscripts of written books from Barbary, North Africa, which are sold for more money than any other merchandise. Here are very rich merchants, and to here journey continually large numbers of Negroes who purchase here cloth from Barbary and Europe. It is a wonder to see the quality of merchandise that is daily brought here, and how costly and sumptuous everything is. Sunni Ali's successor made the pilgrimage to Mecca, and asked to be given the title Caliph of the Land of the Blacks. Songhai then represented a substantial Islamic state on the African frontier of a still expanding Muslim world. The Mughal Empire in India bore similarities to Songhai, where both governed largely non-Muslim populations. Much as the Ottoman Empire initiated a new phase in the interaction of Islam and Christendom, so too did the Mughal Empire continue an ongoing encounter between Islamic and Hindu civilizations. Established in the early 16th century, the Mughal Empire was the creation of yet another Islamized Turkic group, which invaded India in 1526. Over the next century, the Mughals, a Persian term for Mongols, established unified control over most of the Indian peninsula, giving it a rare period of political unity and laying the foundation for subsequent British colonial rule. During its first 150 years, the Mughal Empire, a land of great wealth and imperial splendor, undertook a remarkable effort to blend many Hindu groups and a variety of Muslims into an effective partnership. The inclusive policies of the early Mughal emperors showed that Muslim rulers could accommodate their overwhelmingly Hindu subjects in somewhat the same fashion as Ottoman authorities provided religious autonomy for their Christian minority. In southernmost India, however, the distinctly Hindu kingdom of Vijayanagara flourished in the 15th century even as it borrowed architectural styles from the Muslim states of northern India and sometimes employed Muslim mercenaries in its military forces. Together, these four Muslim empires, Ottoman, Safavid, Songhai, and Mughal, brought to the Islamic world a greater measure of political coherence, military power, economic prosperity, and cultural brilliance than it had known since the early centuries of Islam. This new energy, sometimes called the second flowering of Islam, impelled the continuing spread of the faith to yet new regions. The most prominent of these was Oceanic Southeast Asia, which for centuries had been intimately bound up in the world of Indian Ocean commerce, while borrowing elements of both Hindu and Buddhist traditions. By the 15th century, that trading network was largely in Muslim hands, and the demand for Southeast Asian spices was mounting as the Eurasian world recovered from the devastation of Mongol conquest and the plague. Growing numbers of Muslim traders, many of them from India, settled in Java and Sumatra, bringing their faith with them. Eager to attract those traders to their port cities, a number of Hindu or Buddhist rulers along the Malay Peninsula and in Indonesia converted to Islam, while, transfer while transforming themselves into Muslim sultans and imposing Islamic law. Thus, unlike in the Middle East and India, where Islam was established in the wake of Arab or Turkic conquest, in Southeast Asia, as in West Africa, it was introduced by traveling merchants and solidified through the activities of Sufi holy men. The rise of Malacca, strategically located on the waterway between Sumatra and Malaya, was a sign of the times. During the 15th century, it was transformed from a small fishing village to a major Muslim port city. A Portuguese visitor in 1512 observed that Malacca had no equal in the world. 
Commerce between different nations for a thousand leagues on every hand must come to Malacca. That city also became a springboard for the spread of Islam throughout the region. In the eclectic style of Southeast Asian religious history, the Islam of Malacca demonstrated much blending with local and Hindu Buddhist traditions, while the city itself, like many port towns, had a reputation for rough behavior. An Arab Muslim pilot in the 1480s commented critically, they have no culture at all. You do not know whether they are Muslim or not. Nonetheless, Malacca, like Timbuktu on the West African frontier of an expanding Islamic world, became a center for Islamic learning, and students from elsewhere in Southeast Asia were studying there in the 15th century. As the more central regions of Islam were consolidating politically, the frontier of the faith continued to move steadily outward.